is that the width of A must equal the height of B. Okay, sorry, it's a bit cluttered, but hopefully you can still see what I'm writing. So, okay, but now we know how to multiply matrices. So, what does it mean to multiply matrices? I mean, of course, we've seen, uh, you know, on this example, that we can use the matrix to tell us how to transform from X's to U's. And that's an example of multiplication. But now let's say that we have two matrices like that, telling us how to transform from something to something else. What does it mean to multiply them? So, I claim is that, so I claim that the product AB represents doing first the transformation B, then transformation A. So that's a slightly counterintuitive thing because we're used to writing things from left to right. Uh, unfortunately, with matrices, the way they're done, you multiply, five, I mean, you multiply things from right to left. So if you think about it, you know, when you write, say, you have two functions f and g, you write f of g of x, it really means you apply first g, then f. So it works the same way as that. Okay, so why, why, why is this? Well, if I write ab times x, where x is some vector that I want to transform, it's the same as A times BX. Okay, so this property is called associativity, and it's a good property of well-behaved products. Uh, not of cross product, by the way. But so matrix product is associative. That means we can actually think of a product A, B, X, and multiply them in whichever order we want. We can start with BX, or we can start with AB. So now, Bx means we apply the transformation B to X. And then, multiplying by A means we apply the transformation A. So we first apply B, then we apply A. That's the same as applying AB all at once. Okay. So, another note of warning is that AB and BA are not the same thing at all. Well, I mean, you probably see that already from this interpretation. It's not the same thing to, you know, convert oranges to bananas than to carrots or vice versa. Um, uh, on the other hand, well, I mean, actually even worse, this thing might not even be well defined because, you know, if the height of, sorry, the width of A equals the height of B, we can do this product. But we, no, we don't necessarily, I mean, it's not clear that the width of B will equal the height of, our, of A, which is what we would need for that one. Okay, so, you know, the size condition to be able to do the product might not make sense, actually. Maybe one of them doesn't even make sense. Even if they both make sense, they're usually completely different things. Okay. The next thing I need to tell you is something called the identity matrix. Well, the identity matrix is the matrix that does nothing. Okay, so what does it mean to do nothing? I don't mean the matrix zero. The matrix zero would take x and would always give you back zero. That's not a very interesting transformation. Um, what I mean is the guy that takes x and gives you x again. So it satisfies the you know, property i, so it's called i, and it has a property that i x equals x for all x. So it's the transformation from something to itself. It's the obvious transformation, called the identity transformation. So how do we write that as a matrix? Well, so actually there's an identity for each size, you know, because, of course, depending on whether X has two entries or ten entries, 
uh, the matrix I needs to have a different size. So, for example, the identity matrix of size 3 by 3 has entries 1, 1, 1 on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. Okay, let's check. If we multiply this with a vector, well, okay, maybe I should do that on a separate board. But, so, start thinking about it. What happens when I multiply this with a vector x? Okay, so let's say I multiply the matrix I with a vector x1, x2, x3. Well, what will be the first entry? It will be the dot product between 1, 0, 0 and x1, x2, x3. If you want, this vector is I hat. Okay, so if you do the dot product with I hat, you will get the x component. You will get the first component that will be x1. 1 times x1 plus 0, 0. Similarly here, if I do the dot product, I get 0 plus x2 plus 0. I get x2, and here I get x3. Okay? It works. Same thing if I put here a matrix, I will get back the same matrix. Now, of course, okay, so in general, the identity matrix in size n by n so it's an n by n thing with ones on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. Okay, you just put one at every diagonal position and zero elsewhere. And then you can see if you multiply that by a vector, you will get the same vector back. Okay. Hmm. Oh. Okay, uh, let me give you another example of a matrix. Let's say that in the plane, we look at the transformation that does rotation by 90 degrees, uh, let's say, counterclockwise. So, I claim that this is given by the matrix 0, 1, minus 1, 0. So, let's try to see why that is the case. Well, if I do R times I hat, so if I apply that to the first vector, 